I just want to take a second to thank everyone who has liked our videos, subscribed. We got some some videos that are getting a lot of traction. Uh, we have already broken 100 subscribers, which I realize is not a lot if you're, um, you know, a bigger, if you're watching some people with, you know, 800,000 or a, a million subscribers or anything like that. However, you know, this is only my 10th my video, so I'm incredibly happy that people are taking the time to like, subscribe, and keep up with all the videos. Um, however, you know, I just wanted to reiterate, this is a channel for beginners, um, and I also am not 100% a master in firearms. I do appreciate the people that have had great feedback. Uh, there's a gentleman who left some feedback on the on Atlas Gunwork. Just so you guys are aware, we don't even have a dealer that has staccatos in stock. I purely bought my staccato based on the fact that I like the looks of the gun. As you guys can imagine, it was pretty nerve-wracking. However, I got it. It was an amazing gun. It was a well purchase. Um, I would do it again 150%. And I never plan to sell the gun. It was amazing, amazing uh, opportunity, and and you know I really am happy that I did it. However, I just wanted to reiterate again: this is a channel for beginners, so do not discourage people in the comments with trying to put negative feedback. I would appreciate it if the only negative feedback, I prefer if nobody left any negative comments or any feedback of that sort at all. However, if um, you're going to give some some negative stuff, please direct it towards me. If you're new to firearms, please understand this channel was dedicated to you guys, for you guys to ask questions, for me to try to help, and everyone else. It's not just me. There's people teaching me and stuff in the comments. That's making it fun for me to make these videos. We're going to compare the X5 Legion against the M&P M2.0 um, competitor, ported. So as you can see, it's clear through. So. It's got six ports, three on each side. So let's dive into these two. Safety check them. I know this one has a loaded magazine. Nothing in the actual chamber. So um, let's start with the comparison of the two. So they both come with options very similar. Flush fit, 17 round magazines, and you can get as high as um you know i believe 30 for the sig and i think they make uh let's just keep it to oem magazine so i want to say i think 23 is the biggest you can get in this one uh, if there's something bigger out there that very well could be the case i'm just not aware of it i know i um have seen the 23s and uh they're just you know actually they come with just a slightly larger uh base pad than what the 17 round one does um and both of them also come with available with a 10 round magazine for those states with that 10 round um, uh, magazine limit requirement. So let's dive into these and why I picked this comparison because I already know it's going to get, uh, you know, talked about is these guns aren't really alike. Well, in a sense, they are. They're both, um, you know, really more of a competition style um, a firearm. They both have five inch barrels. Um, they're both nine millimeter, both have, you know, a lot of the same essential features. They're both, you know, obviously capable of being optic ready. Uh, they both have good triggers in them. They both have a lot of, uh, you know, great texturing things along that size. They're both right around the same size as well. So as you can see, if I stand them up next to each other, uh, they're pretty close in size all the way around. So I think that the X5 might just be just a tiny bit longer. Yeah. So on the dust cover, it looks like it's a little bit longer. Nevertheless, uh, we'll talk about a couple things here today and talk about why I picked these. So price is number one, um, been the most common factor that I've seen for anyone, regardless if they're buying a Staccato, if they're buying an Atlas, if they're buying a Glock, if they're buying a Sig, whatever the brand is, they typically have a budget going into whatever they plan to purchase and why they plan to purchase it, whether it's home defense or competition. So with these being... Um, the firearms they are, you know, SIG has a, a, been a fantastic brand for me. I know some people have mixed feelings on them. Uh, MMP for me, and a lot of people swear by these guns, they've been nothing but troublesome for me. However, this one has not. So it has led me to believe the two past uh, MMPs that I've had have just been a bad batch. They do sell a lot of guns, and sometimes the quality control um, sometimes just flat out isn't there. I've also had Springfield Armories that everyone says those guns are garbage or junk, they're not worth anything, and those have been fantastic. So um, do your own research and always inspect your own guns. Um, there's really 
no way around it. I mean, it doesn't matter if you buy the most reliable gun on the planet, you should be testing it out, firing it, making sure everything functions as, as intended. I also noticed with some guns, especially with the lighter trigger, sometimes the ammunition that you fire through the gun can really determine how well it functions. I know there's a couple of different brands, I won't say any names, but there's a couple of different brands that have some really, really strong primers. So it makes it really hard, especially if you get like a lighter trigger pull, you'll sometimes get some uh, failures to, you know, fire. So all that being said, let me dive into, you know, kind of where I'm going with this as far as price range goes. This is a gun that you might find 50 bucks off. So right around, you know, a little bit over a thousand by the time you add you know, a $50 gas pedal and a light on there. I think I paid 130 bucks for a light. Let's just say, you know, right around 1200 bucks. I don't know. Um, you can actually get this guy, uh, you know, right around eight something. Uh, so right around nine, mid nines uh, with tax. And then you can get obviously the porting. I think it's 175. So, you know, you're right around that same margin where you're at here. I mean, it's pretty relatable. However, I have noticed a couple things that I like better about the MMP uh, competitor that I was very surprised. So one, I do like actually the uh, magwell on this gun. So there is no wiggle on it. It is really on there. They beveled the, the actual frame so it slides on and then you're able to lock it in in the back and kind of add this retention. You know, you, you push this clip all the way to the back and it kind of compresses it and it makes it really nice. Um, so I really like that feature. I know a lot of people disliked it. They said, oh, it's not held on by anything. No, it's actually beveled and it's secured in the rear. It's a fully uh, secured system. Now, interestingly enough, I love the way the Magwell feels on this and I love the way that it operates. I mean, you can virtually, um, and just so you know, we're, we're practicing this with, um, you know, an empty magazine, because the other one's not. Um, the competitor has a little bit more catch here then the SIG does. I mean, the SIG, you can virtually just put it in the side and like right here it's caught and you got to kind of, you know, wiggle it in there. Um, not too bad, but you know, if you're going really fast and hard, you catch a friction point, it can, you know, lock you out. Um, especially if you catch it on like the, the front of the, the round or, or the back of the cartridge, um, especially where the extractor is, you bump, bump that up, get that groove caught in, in, in the back here. You won't be able to put it in unless you come at it with a different angle. So I really like the set up for this however for whatever case i this one is only held in by the rear screw so there's actually like a little um thing that goes up into the frame but it doesn't hold it upwards or in it only keeps it from moving left to right so you get a minor amount of play it's not definitely not an issue or anything it's just kind of one of my ocd things um that i have noticed so i wanted to point that out now nextly um, we've gotten through the price range, uh, you know, portion of the video. So I will talk more about the comparison side of it. I'm not going through all the features or specs or anything like that. They're both, you know, five inch uh, competition guns with uh, both chambered in nine millimeter. So um, now one thing I wanted to cover is without even a light, this gun is actually just shy of a pound heavier than this one. So this one's 29 ounces. This one is 43 and a half ounces with a four ounce light. You're well over a pound heavier in in um in overall weight now i did do a shooting comparison and i will just tell you regardless of whatever the shooting comparison shows you this recoils more and i understand people are going to say well this one has all these ports and everything like that i understand that and i did that on purpose but this one has over a pound more of weight and it also has a gas pedal which you can fully use your left hand to press forward and hold the recoil down but a combination of the high bore axis obviously no porting um it recoils more than this one and you'll notice if you don't put more pressure on this front um gas pedal you'll feel a ton of that rocking sensation that everyone talks about the six half um as opposed to this one you just flat out will not now you don't have on this guy you do not have a gas um a gas pedal so you're just forced right here there's like this little landing what i do is i try to push up in here forward and down and that works out really incredibly well
So um, one thing else that I like is just the trigger on this one is by far superior. So again, we're clear. There's not even a magazine in there. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll demonstrate that now. So as you see, as a little wall and it's got a tiny bit of creep. It's sorry, a tiny bit of creep, then a wall, and then it breaks. So we'll show that one more time. Tiny bit of creep and break. If you do the reset, incredibly short. Creep, break. Really nice. Now this guy. This is my number one pet peeve with this firearm. Now, it does not bother me in a sense if I'm taking my time, but if I'm trying to, um, you know, do some quick follow-up shots, I do notice it does affect my accuracy. However, I do like the Dawson Precision Sights on this one better. Nevertheless, it is causing me, because the reset is so long, to not be as accurate as I am with the M&P, along with the recoil. So you got recoil working against you. Um, the weight doesn't really bother me, but I think that if you had a competition gun that you wanted to carry every once in a while, this guy takes a cake all day. But we're not done with the video yet, so keep watching. So, we're going to demonstrate this. You see how far that is? And then it seems like there's less travel when you go to pull the trigger. It makes no sense. So, there's the break. As you see, and that, that's it. When it resets, you're off the trigger already. So, it's taking you back to start no matter how many times you do it, as opposed to this, which I really prefer. So it's already dead, so. So it resets right there. But if you let go, you'll see there's a lot of travel, right? Which is how a trigger, in my opinion, should be. That's one thing that I feel they should have done better. Now this is still a fantastic firearm, and I will talk about some negatives in the MP because I know right now I'm talking about all the positives. However, um, the trigger is a huge benefit. Um, I really like the fact that it comes out of the box with four magazines. Um, you are able to obviously, you know, get some really good training with four magazines right out of the box. And um, another thing that I like is it comes with this optic system. I'm not a big fan of the plastic, not going to lie. It comes with like a, a, a thin polymer um, insert kind of plastic. I don't even know if it's polymer. It, it's, it seems very fragile. Nevertheless, it comes with it out of the box. Um, there's lots of people who use it, so that's probably just me being picky. However, it does come with that option straight out of the box, so you don't have to invest any more money in plates. So it's saving you some money there, which is a good sign. Um, I do like the optic system that's on it already. I wish this would have had a flat instead of this curved edge. I don't really like the curved edge. Nevertheless, it has it, so you know you got to kind of run with it. But um, they're still great sights. They resemble more of actually the X-ray sights that Sig has for uh, like the Spectre Cop. Um, but all in all, really nice um, with the nice work done on this MMP. But now I'm going to point out something uh, that not a lot of people are going to think about, but longevity wise, this is something to think about. So, as you can see on the grip module for the uh, X5 Legion, let's see if we can get a little bit better lighting here. You can see it's got very little wear in here. Very, very little wear here very little so one thing that i've noticed is i run more magazines through this gun you can kind of see it's starting to really wear against this plastic so one concern that i have is over time i think this plastic's really going to get wobbly and i'm already starting to notice it a little bit in the front here not sure if you can hear that it's got a little, little bit of wobble. You really can't feel it, especially now when you're shooting, you can't feel it at all. But nevertheless, it is there. So there's that. Um, I have not noticed any sort of wobble in the actual slide, which a lot of people crucified this gun for, and a lot of wobble in this. I don't have that. Inconsistent trigger pulls. This gun has been amazing. I can't say any of that. The only thing that has been constant is the little bit of play here which doesn't actually bother me at all, and I have pretty bad OCD. So next, speaking of OCD, we're gonna talk about this guy. So I have noticed for some reason, my Spectre Cop does not have it, my M18 does not have it, but this one does. So, and I don't know necessarily that it's gonna be an issue, but it definitely does have some play in the back from left to right. So let's listen to that. Can you hear that? 
Okay, next exercise. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna do that again. It's not the light. It's not the light. It is the back. I'm gonna show you. Watch the back when I shoot, you're gonna see it's gonna slightly move. So I'm gonna try to, actually let me hold it as straight as I can, but we're gonna sh show it. I'm not sure if you can pick that up. It's very minor. Let me see if I can get it closer. Did you see it? It kind of it kind of walks a little bit, which every gun's gonna have a very minor set of walk. However, this one seems to have a little bit more for whatever reason. I'm not sure. Now, has it caused any accuracy issues? For me, it has not. Um, sadly, when I'm shooting and it's bad accuracy, it's just my finger. So, um, and my ability to shoot, sadly enough. So, it's one thing that I've noticed on this gun, and none of my other stakes have it. I don't know if that's something with the X5 Legion or if it's this one entirely. Still functions great. I'm just shy of a thousand rounds through this one. Um, zero malfunctions. I actually put the lighter, I think 11 pound recoil spring in it. I actually really enjoy that because of it. It's incredibly light, like super, super light. I really like that. So, um, I noticed it was very, very tough to get into battery. If I, if I kind of babied it like that and we'll see, yeah, I did it right there. Um, but it's just because there's not enough pressure on the front there and you really shouldn't be riding the it, it's not meant so every gun is meant to, it almost has like a uh, uh, a self aligning system so once you come back you should just be letting it go and you'll never have an issue with that but i noticed what it was is the lock up back here was so tight and it still is very incredibly tight and you'll see on the side there you can see it's shiny it's it's strictly because this is rubbing so much on here so when you really baby it going forward that's what happens now again zero malfunctions um that's the only thing i've noticed and that's just because i'm bored playing with it at home really so um not a real knock on the gun so really if i was to compare these two this gun being 29 ounces you'd have the ability to carry it i would 100 percent trust this in a home defense situation um, it's good for competition i really like it um, granted, if they notice that you're compensated, right, um, you know, and I don't have any competitions where I live. Um, I don't even have an outdoor range, but I will tell you, both guns are incredibly accurate. I am able to shoot closer groups with this one if we're, if we're talking time-wise because of how accurate the trigger is and the recoil. Um, you know, and this one, I, I just can't. The, the trigger is a little bit... Now, they're both the same in accuracy. Don't get me wrong. It's my ability to shoot these two as a you know, getting familiarized with them, kind of going back and forth, you know, you really can get used to one gun more than the other. Combination of that, next week, I'm gonna be comparing the MMP uh, Shield Plus Performance Center 3.1 inch versus my X Macro P365. So keep that in mind uh, for next week's video and be sure to like and subscribe.